today on Kahuna 6, what I want to do is focus on my electric um, propulsion system that, uh, that we use on, uh, on this boat. As you know, Kahuna 6 is an all-electric boat, which means there is no propane, no diesel, uh, or, or gasoline. Everything is operated uh, via electricity. And so for my propulsion, I use the e-propulsion Navy 6-0 outboard motor. The Navy 6-0 outboard motor is a 6,000 6, watt uh, motor, which means it is basically equivalent to a 9.9 .9 outboard motor. Uh, you can purchase these things from dealers. You can get them on the internet, uh, uh, quick internet search, and, uh, and you'll find various options. Um, the system includes the outboard motor, uh, and it also includes uh, the battery pack. On Kahuna 6, and I'll show that in a little bit, I use three E80 batteries. And E80 is the e-propulsion 48 volt 80 amp battery. So my battery bank is, uh, is rigged in parallel. I have three batteries. So I have 240 amps at 48 volts, or roughly right around 11,500 watts of power for the electric motor. Uh, the system also includes the display as well as the throttle. And it may be a little hard to see the display, but uh, here's I kind of throttle up and down. You can kind of see how that works. One of the, uh, the advantages of the electric motor is that you get real precise motor control by limiting the amount of electricity from basically 10 watts up to 6,000 watts. Uh, you can really con control the speed and the torque of the, uh, of the motor. In fact, I once basically parallel park uh, Kahuna 6 between two larger boats um, because I had that precise motor control. If you notice the mounting of the of the the motor on Kahuna 6, because the rudder naturally just kind of sits on the center line, I have it offset to the port side, which um, one advantage or perhaps disadvantage of that is it really gives me kind of an exaggerated prop walk whenever I do use the motor. And, uh, and particularly when I put uh, Kahuna 6 in reverse, my bow really wants to, uh, to swing to, to port. I use that to my advantage um, when uh, doing precise maneuvers, primarily docking. Uh, it's it's kind of good to, to know that with just a little reverse power, I can move my, my bow to, uh, to port. In fact, if I just want to go straight back, I pretty much have to have the rudder hard over in order to counterbalance that, uh, that prop walk. So again, it's a blessing, but it also can be a curse. Um, but it is something once you learn, um, you can use to your advantage. The other thing, uh, if you notice, uh, you'll notice the, the rope on how I've connected it to the, uh, to the outboard motor. Um, I do that because the, uh, as the way to raise and, uh, and lower the motor. All of the weight of the electric motor is basically, you can see the, the big bump there, that's the motor at the propeller. So that sits underwater, which, you know, the advantage is it's quiet. You don't hear it whenever, whenever you use it. There's no whine or anything. All you ever hear is just the rustling of the water. But when it comes time to lifting the, uh, the motor out of water, all that weight is on the bottom. And so, it, you know, you kind of have that lever effect of trying to offset that weight. So in order to do that through trial and error, I rigged the rope with some simple block and tackle. And as you can see, uh, it's not that difficult to, to raise and lower the, um, the outboard motor. One of the challenges that I have on Kahuna 6 is space. It's a very small boat. So what I've done is I've positioned the, the batteries 
in uh, in two locations. One is partly in the um, compartment where the old diesel was. I was able to fit one outboard motor. Here you can uh, you can see the motor. Uh, the four lights. Uh, when lit up, that tells me the battery is fully charged, and as the battery is drained, uh, the lights start to disappear. So when there's only one light left, you have basically zero to 25 percent of uh, of battery. Um, the, the other cables, just to um, just to kind of highlight them, you can see the red and black. Those are are obviously the uh, the power cables that um, hook the batteries in parallel and then to eventually to the motor. But you also have two communication cables. Uh, these communication uh, cables allow the batteries to talk to one another and it allows you just to press one button there on the control panel to turn all the batteries on and all the batteries off without having to turn each one on um, simultaneously, each one on individually. Um, it also kind of helps um, with the, the BMS system and to balance the motors um, as the, the draw is coming, uh, as the motor is drawing from the batteries. And it also allows the display to maintain kind of an accurate count of just uh, how much battery you've, you've used. So this battery, uh, I call the, the primary battery or the number one battery because you can see it has this communication cable or third cable and that cable connects directly to the motor. So um, this battery is kind of the, the prime battery. The other two batteries uh, hook into uh, to this. And I'll show you where, uh, where those batteries are located and then I'll talk about rigging uh, batteries a little bit in parallel. Kahuna 6 has a very small head and um, so where the holding tank was I've now been able to fit two of the uh, the other E80 uh, batteries. Um, I'm able to do that because I use a, um, a dry flush toilet from Laveo and I may do a video on that um, separately, but it, bottom line is uh, it does not require a, a holding tank. So I'm able to use that space um, for the batteries. Again, you can see the, uh, the red and black cables that's connecting, as well as the, um, uh, the communication cables between the, uh, the batteries. I'm going to show this and then I'm going to talk about it uh, on a drawing because it's a little difficult to explain uh, by looking at it. But um, here you can see the positive bus bar, bus bar with um, um, three, actually there's four cables, one, two, three, four, four positive cables. Um, this is how I'm rigging everything in parallel and then one of those cables runs to the uh, the motor. Um, behind this wall and tucked in the back, it's just too hard to get the camera in there, I have a similar setup for the, uh, for the negative side. So in order to rig my three E80 batteries in parallel, um, I'm connecting them not necessarily to each other, but I'm connecting them all to a bus bar and then run a cable from the bus bar to the motor. And the reason I do that is to allow for equal draw of all three batteries. Because my batteries are located in two different locations, it would be kind of difficult to have the same length of cable connecting all three batteries. These two batteries that were in the uh, the head, the way they were, uh, were, were rigged was you just had a positive going from this number three battery to the number two battery and the negative doing the exact same thing. Those cables were approximately 12 inches. Then you had an, an another red cable and black cable going from the number two battery 
to the uh, to the primary battery those cables were approximately four feet long and then from the main battery you uh, we had approximately an eight foot cable running to the motor um, having different length of cables connecting batteries in parallel creates inconsistent resistance within the system and actually um, can cause the whole system to fail. In fact, um, on my trip to Clearwater, um, I had that, uh, that battery failure. I was able to work around it by um, e eliminating the parallel connections and just running the motor off of one single battery at a time. Um, and the reason the system failed was because of the different resistance caused the, the three batteries not to work together in unison, but to, start, but to draw down at different levels. That started to confuse the BMS, and as a result, they, uh, they shut the system down. So the way to get around that when you have batteries in different locations is to rig to a bus bar and in this case, all of my batteries uh, are rigged to that bus bar with 30-inch uh, cables. And then from the bus bar, I have the 8-foot cable to the, uh, to the motor. This way, the resistance is the same because the 8-foot cable is drawing power, if you will, from the bus bar that's being fed equally uh, by the three batteries along the same or along the same length of uh, of 30 inch 30 inch cables, and this allows the three batteries to all be drawn down at the at the same level. And um, this is a common mistake when rigging uh, batteries in uh, in parallel. So based upon how you have your batteries, if you have different lengths of cable, um, then you are creating different levels of resist resistance. And in the case of lithium batteries, um, the BMS may become very sensitive to that, and it's just something to, uh, to keep in mind. So let's talk some real-world numbers. Um, Kahuna 6, you got to keep in mind, has uh, only an 18 and a half foot water line. So its, uh, its hull speed is essentially a maximum at five and a half knots. So it's a, it's a slow boat to begin with. The, uh, the other thing is it's a very heavy boat uh, with about 6,000 pounds of displacement. Uh, once you throw in another 1,000 pounds, 1,500 pounds with passengers and cruising supplies, it's not that uh, that uncommon to have this boat weigh in uh, in excess of 8,000 pounds, and uh, 8,000 pounds on an 18 and a half foot water line, um, you are not expected to go very fast. Nonetheless, with the electric motor, I've done a, a variety of testing in kind of con controlled um, areas. Uh, I live in a canal system, so I'm able to to drive the boat up and down in the canals. And um, what I've found is at 400 watts of power, so even though the motor can, uh, can use up to 6,000 watts, using uh, basically 1 15th of that, uh, that power, I'm able to push the boat at around two knots. Um, I use that oftentimes to, uh, to what I jokingly call electro sailing. I'll have the sails up, but in very light winds where I'm moving, you know, at about a knot, knot and a half, I'll put 400 watts of power into the motor, and now the, the boat will move, you know, real close to about three knots, maybe uh, two and a half to to two and three quarters, just kind of depending upon waves and current and um, and the uh, the strength of the wind. Um, at 400 knots, at 400 watts of power, um, I can uh, I can do that for over 24 hours, and uh, it, it provides you with a, with just a, 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 
an additional oomph, if you will, to your speed when uh, when there are just no winds to uh, to assist. Um, in the canal, when uh, I go through my channel to, to hit open water, um, I normally will use about a thousand to 1200 watts. Uh, oftentimes it depends on whether the tide is with me or, or against me. Uh, when the tide is against me, using about 1200 watts of power or about one-fourth the, uh, the capability, or excuse me, one-fifth the capability, um, I'm able to move the boat right at about uh, three and a half to three in the three point six, three point seven uh, knots. If the tide is with me, I'm able to do that speed at uh, at a thousand uh, at a thousand watts. And again, um, uh, my battery bank is uh, is about eleven eleven and a half eleven thousand five hundred. So at a thousand watts, I could do that for 11 hours. Um, my channel is, it's a long channel, but it's only three miles. So within about 45 minutes, I'm out of my channel. And normally I'm still sitting on around 93 to 94% uh, battery power. Um, one of the criticisms you will get on, uh, on electric boats is what happens when you have to fight a current and, uh, and the winds are against you. And, and all these other horrible things. Um, well, as the example, on my uh, return trip from Marathon, um, I had to turn into a 20 mile an hour wind um, and then traverse my channel against that 20 mile an hour wind for about three and a half miles. Um, I was using about 2500 watts and was moving through my channel at about two and a half knots of speed so I was going slow um, I was doing that at four o'clock in the morning on an unlit channel and I was very happy to go slow because I had to spot the markers with a uh, with a spotlight so that doesn't that doesn't bother me um, I have uh, entered the, uh, the clear water channel and there, the uh, the current can uh, can be very strong. About a three, three and a half, four knot current. Um, I did that using at about three thousand watts of power, and uh, went slow. I was you know, only making about one and a half knots of uh, of power. I had the sails down. The wind was uh, was against me, so I was actually going into a headwind as well. Um, but you can still get in. It's just going to going to take you a little longer, and you're going to going to burn up some power. So it's always good to uh, to have some kind of a reserve power. The other key thing that um, uh, with this electric boat that you you kind of have to be aware of is is as I said, I've got eleven and a half eleven thousand five hundred watts of of battery power for my for my motor. Um, how do I get more electricity in? And the way I'm rigged, I can do it, um, in essence, one of, um, I guess, four ways. Uh, the first way is this Navy 60 Evo model allows for uh, regeneration of power. So when I'm under sail, uh, with the outboard motor down, the propeller will spin, and that'll generate electricity. On my trip to Marathon, I experimented with that. Um, didn't have a lot of luck. I was uh, actually averaging about four and a half, five knots of speed. Uh, the display was saying I was regenerating anywhere from 40 to 50, uh, 50 watts of power per hour. And I maintained that speed for a good 20 hours. So in theory, I should have put you know, anywhere from 800 to 900 watts of power back into the motor. Um, the reality was um, when I checked the, my percentages, I'd actually lost a percent of, of power. So it was a, a net loss, not a net gain. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that, that occurred. And so for the rest of the trip, I didn't use regeneration. So even though the manufacturer says I can regenerate, 
I didn't have a lot of luck uh, in that 24 hour period. Um, the other way you can, you know, put the electricity back in, of course, is you get to a marina and you plug into shore power and uh, with the accompanying battery charger for the E80s, I can recharge my batteries uh, in eight to 10 hours, just depending upon how depleted they are. So if you get to a marina, you spend a night in the marina, the next morning you're, you're fully uh, recharged. Um, but if you are planning on uh, spending time at anchor and not going into a marina, uh, then I have uh, two additional options. One is I, I'm rigged, and uh, I'll talk about how I do my house bank, but I can actually transfer electricity from my house bank to my motor bank. So I can use my house bank to recharge um, my motor bank. I have a, a fairly large house bank. Uh, I have a 10,000 watt house bank. So I can, um, without much issue, uh, transfer two, 3,000 watts from the house bank to the motor bank to give me uh, extra electricity for the motor. On my uh, return trip from Marathon, because I was doing an awful lot of motoring, I did that. And I transferred about 2,500 um, watts of power. Uh, when I finally got uh, home, uh, my house bank was at around 60% and my motor bank was about at uh, 30%. Um, so that extra 2,500 uh, helped me to maintain a, a nice uh, buffer. Uh, and then the last uh, way is, uh, is a portable generator. Um, I have a Northern Tool Power Horse uh, 2000 watt generator um, that when I went to my trip to Marathon as an example, I brought that and two gallons of fuel. So when I say I don't carry any fuel, uh, maybe that's a, a bit of a, of a, of a white lie. Uh, in this case, I had one gallon of fuel in the generator and and a gas can, a little two gallon gas can, um, which would give me, in essence, 12,000 watts that I would pump into either my house bank or my motor bank or any combination of the two. On the uh, 600 mile round trip to Marathon, didn't use a generator at all. So uh, it's there just as an emergency backup, but it is not necessary. So um, again, it, it just depends on how you want to do it uh, multiple ways uh, I have I also carry 300 watts of solar um, that's barely enough to uh, in fact it's actually a, a little insufficient to cover my daily house bank requirements um, but with a couple hundred additional watts of solar I would actually be running a solar surplus on the house bank and then I could use that to uh, to put electricity back into the house bank for longer trips um, things that um, I don't like about the uh, uh, the electric motor um, I guess the number one is it is really a, a speed distance problem um, if I want to go fast I can't go fast for very long if I um, don't care about the speed I can uh, go three three and a half knots for, um, for quite a while, for a good 12, 14, um, 14 hours, if you will. Um, I, th I think in an emergency, um, the best I could do is probably travel um, 50 miles, uh, burning up you know, electricity from my house and the motor. So if I absolutely had to get somewhere fast against the wind, um, my range is probably limited to, uh, to 50 miles, given my, my setup. If I could design a perfect setup uh, for this boat or for a similar boat, 30, 32 footer, uh, that weighs you know, five to 7,000 pound displacement, I would recommend uh, a minimum of a 300 amp battery bank. I have 240. Um, hasn't been a problem, as I said. I did 600 miles round trip and uh, used the motor an awful lot, and it did not find it limiting in, uh, in, in the least. Um, the thing that I, I really 
love about the motor is the simplicity of it. Um, there are, I, I should show you my tool bag, um, but I, I just carry a couple of, uh, a couple of general tools so I can tighten loose wires. I do carry a little extra wire to replace a battery cable or something like that, but there's no oil. There's no oil filters, there's no water pumps, there's no impellers, there's no wrenches to remove the, the pumps and the impellers. Um, if my motor doesn't work, it's because there's uh, some kind of a, a problem with the connection between the battery and the motor. It's that simple. If a diesel doesn't work, um, there's a variety of, of things that you have to, to troubleshoot. So the simplicity of maintaining the, the motor is, is something that I just, I love. And again, on a small boat like this, I, I don't use any space for spare parts or motor tools uh, in order to, to fix things that inevitably, inevitably break. Uh, the other thing I just love about the boat, uh, or the electric propulsion, is how quiet it is. Um, there have been times when I've been electro sailing and I'm running the, the motor at around 400 watts and I'm laying down in the cockpit, you know, reading a book or listening to music and you don't hear it. In fact, there have been times all of a sudden the wind has freshened and I forget that I had the, uh, the motor on. Um, it, it feels just like sailing whether you're, um, you have light winds and you're electric sailing or you have no winds and you're pretty much just motoring, it feels and certainly sounds just like sailing. Uh, you hear the ripple of the water and that's it. Um, there's no smell. There are no diesel fuel uh, fumes. There's no smell, you know, the, the diesel smell that seeps into the cockpit, something my wife calls boat smell. Uh, you don't get any of that. So it's simple, easy to maintain, um, silent, and, uh, and it doesn't smell. Um, I, I just love the, uh, of the electric motor and, uh, and what it does. And when you combine it with, uh, you know, a total commitment to an all-electric boat, um, your ability to steal electricity from the motor bank or the, uh, the house bank gives you some added flexibility that you can't get from a diesel. Um, you know, folks said, well, you know, you can't cross an ocean. Well, I'm not sure I will ever cross an ocean, but if I did, and I ran out, uh, my mast fell down 700 miles from the nearest shore, I could get home with this boat. Um, I have my solar panels, and I may get home slow, but I would be able to motor those 700 miles back. If I had a diesel, and my... I only carried enough gas for 500 miles, um, then I still come up 200 miles short with no way, no way to bridge that last 200. Here with an electric and solar or wind, uh, I don't have wind, but um, if you have that ability to, to regenerate, um, then you really have unlimited range. Um, it's just slower. So you trade time for distance, if you will. And that's probably the biggest difference between electric and diesel. With um, electric, you go slower, but in reality, uh, with solar, I can go forever. Diesel, you'll go faster, but you're limited to the amount of fuel you carry. So uh, I hope this is, uh, has been uh, well, it's been a longer video than I initially thought it was going to be. Hope it's been somewhat uh, instructional or educational. By all means, if you have any questions, uh, um, please uh, ask them in the comment section. Happy to answer them. And, uh, and if I need to make some additional videos to highlight uh, certain things, uh, you know, I'll be happy to do that. 
Um, the next video that I will put out, I will focus on my house bank uh, to the extent that uh, I'm able to get cameras into some nooks and crannies, but, uh, and then I'll try to show how this all ties together. Um, but uh, as a gentleman sailor, uh, electricity, it's quiet, efficient, and it's the only way to go.